Hello all. In today's session of parallel programming, we'll be moving on to the next topic, uh, data parallel examples and advanced MPI functionality. We have seen point-to-point -point communication and collective communication in MPI. Now we'll see the data parallel examples. Coming to the data parallel examples here, we have a stream triad and go cell exchange. And this uh, stream triad is nothing but a benchmark. As we have already seen in the previous class, benchmark is nothing but a program which will help you to analyze different parameters based on that particular program. So here tried stream benchmark tried is used for calculating the bandwidth of a given program. Now when you want to calculate the bandwidth of a program here in parallel computing we go for stream tied as I told you. So here we are declaring an array size and this operator you already know this is a left shift operator and this one value is being shifted to 20 times so it will be roughly 1 million elements so you are def uh, defining the array size about 1 million elements as parallel computing will not be used for normal elements we only go for using it in graphical processing or image processing and uh, these are your start and end times how bandwidth variable how to store it and you are taking three variables here abc and going for uh, dynamic memory allocation based on your array size and you are vectorizing this particular array pragma omp parallel based on your array size and you are taking initial values into a b and c and if you want to go for making this uh, calculate the bandwidth of here we are st storing the start time here using omp get w time and you are even storing your end time so before you uh, start this uh, tried operation here you are calculating your normal operation so for this you want to know the amount of bandwidth so you have started your time and ended up your time and after performing your start time and end time this is used for calculating your bandwidth and here it is 1 e to the power of x per in scientific notation so this is generally used for converting your time into seconds so you will get the bandwidth in the power of uh, in uh, ratios of seconds bandwidth uh, so memory bandwidth of gigahertz per second so 10 gigahertz per second or 20 gigahertz per second so you want your denominator to be converted into seconds for that we go for converting this start and end time into seconds and since we have gone for memory allocation functions we are freeing up the memory that is being released so this tried operation so whatever operations you are doing here parallelly for this operation what is the amount of bandwidth required that has been used here now the next data parallel example here is nothing but your ghost cell exchange so ghost cell exchange is nothing but assume this is your core 1 this is your core 2 this is core 3 and this is core 4 where you are executing four different process available so while you are making computation in parallel computing so you may require that one core requires the data uh, from one particular core another core requires the data from here so you want have want to have some space where you can store the data uh, from the other particular core so for that this is your actual data related to this core one and around the actual data we have the empty cells which we call it as a hollow this we call it as a hollow and these empty cells are used for exchanging the data from one core to the other core so these are four different cores and for your understanding you can uh, go for four different process executing on four different cores with different color representation for you to understand now we'll see, just see an example how the exchange is done so if you go along your x-axis where you want the values to be swapped you can just concentrate here i want this value to be swapped with this value right or you want this value to be used in particular uh, computations so this value you can just store it in an empty space of hello similarly this value can be moved into your empty space so here empty spaces are used for exchanging the values from one core to other core and similarly when you go for along your y-axis as you can just see here this particular value this particular value is moved into your empty location so this is moved into your empty location which was present at the top similarly this particular value which you want to store will be stored in your empty locations at the bottom so this is along your y axis you are storing so this halo is nothing but the empty cells which are being surrounded across the actual cells which are used for performing some computations now coming to your advanced mpi functionality 
we have advanced MPI functionality here. So if you want to go for additional functionality to be included along with your MPI things, we use uh, MPI custom data types. So when you go for your MPI custom data types, you can just declare them as other than the normal data types. You have MPI underscore int, MPI underscore char, right? Other than these normal data types, we can even go for custom data types where it is MPI type continuous where you can store your continuous data. Similarly, MPI type vector. So when you go for your MPI type vector, it is of the form stride. Stride in the sense, you will be having a non, uh, it is not continuous memory, it is non-contiguous memory. So one block of it will be assigned to block one and this will be for block two and this will be for block three. So each or total memory will be divided into parts and they are not contiguously allocated. So you have non-contiguous memory here. So it is MPI type vector. And we have another custom data type, which is nothing but you can go for creating a subarray, MPI type create subarray. So when you can just see, this is your total array size, seven rows and 10 columns, zero to seven, zero to seven are your seven rows and zero to 10 are your 10 columns, seven rows and 10 columns. And from this, you are starting a subarray. So start size is nothing but at two comma two. So here, this is two, second row, second column, you are starting it. And what is the size of it here? Three comma four. So three comma four in that sense, you have three rows and four columns which are being operated. So here in the actual array, you are going for creating a subarray. So when you want some additional functionality to be done, we can go for using MPI custom data types. And for that custom data types to be enabled, before you start using your custom data types, you have to use MPI type commit then start using your data types. And once you have finished using it, you can go for just MPI type free. So this particular custom data types can be available for your next usage. The next additional functionality is topology support. Till now we have seen that you have an MPI communication world. So what is MPI communication world? We have seen that there will be n number of process involved which will be communicating. So what is the topology of this particular communication? So you can even go for uh, determining the topology support. So the first step would be you initialize your MPI environment. So init function as we have already seen communication size which will give you the number of process involved and communication rank which will involve the ID related to each and every process and finalize is your MPI environment is stopped here. So this is for determining the size and rank of a communicator. Now coming to the next step, what you need to do is you have to define the dimension and periodicity of a grid. For that, we go for MPI cart create, cartesian. So topology support here, we can even call it as cartesian topology, right? So MPI create, and this is your communicator handle, which will define the number of process. And this n dimensions, when you go for your n dimensions, here you specify, if you are giving two, it is two dimensional. If you are giving three, it is three dimensional. And coming to this dimensions, assume if n dimension is two dimensional, you have to specify the size of two dimensional. So if I give four by four, it means that you can store 16 values, right? So this defines the number of dimension and this is the size of the dimension and you have periods. Periods here is nothing but your grid can be periodic or grid can be non-periodic. So one indicates periodic and zero indicates non-periodic. Periodic and non-periodic in the sense. Now when you go for this particular array, when I say periodic is one, when you are using your last edge in the computation, so it will be wrapped around. So when you are wrapping around the last, if you are going, your calculations is beyond the last column. So that will be connected to your first column. Similarly, if your calculations is beyond the last row, it will be connected to your first row wrap. As you wrap a paper, so the last edge will come to your starting and the last uh, row will come to your starting. So this is wrapping around. And zero indicates it is non-periodic, so there is no wrapping. And you can even change the order of the process which are involved in the topology. So if you are set to one, process may be reordered for performance reasons. Otherwise, you can set to zero. The rank assignment remains unchanged. So whatever may be the consequences, once you assign zero to a process, it will be as it is zero. Whereas here, the process rank can be changed. 
so that is related to this particular things where it will go for reorder flag the next one is ambassent cart communicator so this is this you will be just declaring it as mpi com this is your data type and for that we go for creating it as cart com so this is a, a communicator this is a handle to your communicator which is used for your cartesian creation so you are just passing the address of that particular thing so here in the first we go for mpi environment in the second one we go for creating the periodicity of the grid mention the number of dimensions uh, size of each dimension whether it, it should be periodic whether you can reorder or not and actual address of your cartesian topology and after that you can retrieve the coordinates of each process here using your mpi card coordinates so card communicator as you all know rank will give you uh, the id of each and every process n dimensions as we have seen whether it is two dimensional or whether it is three dimensional and this will give you the coordinates present at that particular value so whichever rank if i am mentioning it as one rank is equal to one in place of rank value one it means that for process one i need to know what are the coordinates so if it is successful it returns a value mpi success otherwise uh, you will not be getting any of the coordinate value so coordinate will contain the actual coordinate values and once you are able to retrieve the coordinate values you can even perform any of your point to point communications or collective communications which we have already seen mpi send and receive related to point to point and you have collective communication where you have all gather reduce scatter uh, all gather all gather all reduce scatter all these operations can be used and once you are done with the cartesian communicator you can just go for freeing up using mpi communication free and you need to use it as ambassent cart communication so while creation also you are passing the same address of the cart communication and for releasing also you will be using the same address so this uh, are the two in this session we have covered the data parallel examples and the topology support or advanced communication um, advanced communication mpis here we will be moving on to the next topic in the next class